Alright, what is up guys? This is Team Casey and in this video I'm going to show you how you install Pterodactyl on Linux. And there is no official support for Windows. There are people that have gone into work on Windows, but it's not recommended because the installation is really tricky if you don't know how to properly install everything and configure everything by yourself. So it's highly recommended that you do this on Linux because all the official guides for it, for it are on Linux. And the operating system we're going to use is Ubuntu Server 1604 because the guide that the official guide on the Teradactyl website is made in uh, is designed around Ubuntu 1604 primarily. There are other parts on the on the introduction docs where they have other installation parts for like CentOS and all the other OSs, but the but it's designed around Ubuntu 604. So that's what I recommend. If you're gonna install this and use this personally, like for your own game servers, I would suggest doing Ubuntu 1604. You can use the desktop version of it as well, but we're using the server version because that's what I have on hand and pre-installed on a virtual machine on my computer, which we're going to use. So let's start it off with the going on going through the introduction here so the the supported games out of the box is minecraft rust terraria team speak for voice mumble for voice team fortress 2 csgo garry spot and arc survival evolved and there are other nest things like here where you can find a community made bots so there's a guy called parker svp or whatever it's called in their official discord which has made a bunch of different eggs for for Pterodactyl, and it's called Eggs. It's pretty much like other game types of servers you can host in it, but there, there are a bunch. So if you go here, um, Parker VCP, that's what it's called, and it links to his own GitHub. We have stuff like Arma, this different bots for like Discord, Chronexile, database stuff like MariaDB stuff, Don't Starve, um stuff like this factorial gta for like 5m and stuff other Minecraft stuff a bunch of different things so i would really suggest going checking this out i will leave a link in it in the video description to where then it also has a guide here how you import the egg into the uh, guide and i will probably show it in the video later on when we get to it so let's go through this real quick. So responsibility and responsible disclosure, yada, yada, yada. It is completely open source, so, and it's completely free. So all you need is the operating system and a server to install it on. So like a virtual machine, if you're renting a dedicated server box, etc., etc. So let's go to the getting started section for the panel. So here we go. So picking in server OS, here's the different stuff here. So as you see here, Ubuntu 1604, it says it's ending the end of life. Uh, apparently it has been updated a bit since I last did it. So it, here it says documented is written assuming Ubuntu 1804 as the base OS, but when I installed it, my yourself personal my own dedicated server that I have, it was 1604, it was the, um, base OS. So everything should still be pretty much the same. So I'm going to move this over to my other screen. I'm going to follow the guide exactly like it says here. So we got the server connected through, through to uh, Putty here. So let's start with logging as sudo or as root doing sudo su and type in a password. So yeah, so we actually get as the root user i'm gonna clear this and let's go to default folder and now what we're gonna do right out of the bat just to get everything updated and upgrade all the packages etc we're gonna do apt update and double add signs and apt, apt upgrade and add a dash y afterwards which means that it's gonna update and upgrade everything and you pretty much just said yes it's go ahead don't you don't need any interactions or whatever it's just going to keep going and it can take a second while it's doing all of this 
it, it takes a while. I only gave my VM four cores and four gigs of RAM just to get everything somewhat speedy. It is recommended to have more than four gigs of RAM for like any game server on the OS because the OS is gonna consume a little bit of RAM. The uh, web server this runs on will consume a bit, etc., etc. So if we're gonna run a game server like Garry's mod that doesn't meet, need more like two cores and four gigs of RAM, I would say maybe get like a three core or four core VM with maybe like six gigs of RAM, so you know that there's enough resources for the Garry's mod server to run. And all the game servers are, are of course, like in, independent from each other. So if you're gonna run Minecraft and you know you need, yeah, I would always say like the micro server expect, if you expect it to, to run with eight gigs of RAM, get 10 gigs just for the OS and all the initial programs. So you can calculate the OS resources requirements out of the game server itself. It's just a recommendation. You go ahead and choose whatever you want, whatever you feel like you want to do. So uh, it's gonna go ahead and finish up here real quick. So while, we, while it does that, we can go through here the packages. So pretty much all this is pretty much almost copy paste. The, depending on your OS, you might have to change some stuff here. But since we're running Ubuntu Server 16, we pretty much can just copy paste like pretty much everything in here. So this page will be in the video description so that you can just copy paste it and follow along as needed and it's actually kind of simple a lot of people the reason I'm making this video is I've seen a lot of people in the um, in the pterodactyl discord their official discord server having issues installing the panel and getting it to run so that's why I decided hey let's make a video about it and get and like help and get as many people to be able to install this because if you don't know Linux that well, it can be a little bit tricky to get it set up and going and working, etc., etc. So it's it's just easier to see and follow along on the video instead of following the guide because it's not it, sometimes for new people, it's not really that straightforward, especially if you're not used to Linux. So yeah, I would I would recommend following the guide and yeah, so yeah. So there are, there are parts we're gonna have, we are gonna have to do here that are a little bit separate from each other. You, you will see when we get to it. And I will have another video installing this on a OVH server because installing this on servers from OVH, so you start and those kind of business, uh, server, server hosting companies that are pretty much from OVH, they have a different system that you need to use in order to install this properly. I think even their VMs like needs to, some edits. Okay, now when it's updated and upgraded, etc., it's clear. Just we get a blank screen here, and let's go ahead and copy the first language: app app dash y install the um, software dependent dependent the software properties common and curl. This is pretty much just, this is pretty fast. Well, it was already updated and installed for mine. And then we copy each line separate because you can copy everything like and paste it in, but I would recommend copying each line and adding them in separately. Just so you know that you're copying and pasting in the correct things. And as you can see, I didn't copy everything there, which was a mistake. So I'm gonna add the R to that because I misspelled server because I copy pasting. And let's keep going. Copy everything, paste it in. And then you're gonna wanna do an apt update to update repositories. As soon as it's added there and doing apt update. And while we do that, I'm gonna move over here again. And now we can see here, and add, add apt add repository universe. This is only if you are in Ubuntu 1804 or higher because it doesn't have the universe repository by default, as far as I know. So we don't need to do that because we are on 16.04, which already has it. So let's copy the last line in this box. And it has the, um, yes, I want to confirm everything installed proper. And it's gonna go ahead and install everything. This can take a while depending on your 
system set up network speed because it's going to have download and install etc 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 so it can take a while and we are going to add gonna pre-install some other stuff that we, that is going that we're going to install later but we're going to do it now for simplicity just to keep it up so to say so once this finishes which it just did there we're going to do apt that's why install zip unzip just so we get zip and unzip installed because the panel will need those functions and then we're going to go install the composer this is on the same page that we were just on which is it's pretty much just copy pasting and there we go and now we're going to create the uh, website part of it because we're doing the panel install right now we're going to install the panel everything here is from their docs and it's default all these locations can be changed depending on how you have your stuff set up so we have created it and we entered the um, the panel directory that we have. So now we're going to download the um, the panel itself, which is the, at the current cur at the moment is version zero point seven point fifteen. So we're going to curl download it. You can also do it through wget if you want to do that, but curl is recommended. And we're going to tar it. So, which means pretty much extract everything. And we're gonna give it permissions with, with the uh, chmod command. And now we come to what we need here, which means we're gonna open up this up the database configuration, which is needed. You have to do this. So, first, when you get here, you're gonna have the MySQL user password, blah, 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 yada, 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 for MySQL connection. But we're gonna run another command first, which is my SQL underscore what was it? Uh, secure installation. Yeah, there we go. And we don't have a password yet, so we can press that and switch to unit socket in the socket. No. Change the root password. Yes. So now I'm gonna put in a password. I'm gonna make it one, two, three, four just for simplicity. So, and now we just want to press yes to everything. Pre we pretty much just, uh, what, what we just did here was uh, uh, re remove the anonymous users because that's not needed and it's not secure. So we're going to remove that automatically. And we're going to disable the remote login for root, which we just did there. And we're going to drop, we're going to remove the slash drop the test database and access to it because security. And then we finally reloaded the privileged database. So now we've done that, we can continue with the MySQL guide, which is login as the use the root user and the password we just set. Now we're gonna type in use my SQL and quota, whatever you want to call that sign thingy. This pretty much since we're using MariaDB, it's not really it's not different from MySQL, but it's using different command tables. Or commands so right now we're switching to mysql mode which allows us to run normal mysql commands and after we're going to create the user and password i'm going to leave this at default so create user pterodactyl at and the host so this is localhost but in an ip identified by some password this part is where you can put a password but i'm going to use the default that comes with the guide for simplicity so I just created the user and then we're going to create the database for the pterodactyl panel. So we're going to just leave this as default. And now we're going to grant uh, the um, user just created the permissions to use that table or the, that database. So we got the pterodactyl user that we created with the host, which is localhost, and then the database dot everything all the tables and everything inside that database so it, you, you grant this user full permission to that database 
And with grant option, I don't really know why that is. Uh, I'm not into MySQL that much. I don't really know what that does, but Pterodactyl says that it's needed. So we're gonna give it that. And then we're gonna, we are gonna create another user right away because we are gonna set up the database access for the game servers because you probably want MySQL database for most of your servers. So you're gonna create another user called Pterodactyl user and add the local host and by some password just to make it simple, gonna make it exactly the same as the other one. And then we have to do the, the grant permission again, but this time we're gonna have all the database, which means star dot star, which means every single database. This is access to entire MySQL database server. And then we have to do the flush privileges command to uh, pretty much like say, hey, I'm done with this. Now we're gonna flush it. And to get out, we just type exit or quit, but I'm just typing exit for ease of use. So now when that MySQL is done, we're gonna, we can remove, we can go back from the MySQL uh, section because now that is done. And we can continue from after the MySQL install. So which means that we're just gonna keep going from exactly where we were. We're gonna copy the environment of the sample file to .environment or .env. And then we're gonna do the um, composer install. Let's see if it will allow this because sometimes the, I don't know if it's here or if it's somewhere else, it might want you to um, use the, um, it doesn't like, on some systems, it doesn't really like to you when you root to just type composer install or whichever command it was. Um, it might be with a daemon, I can't really remember, but in that case, it, it's gonna explain it in the error and then if it if you get you know, user unauthorized or whatever and it says your username instead of use instead of root just type sudo in front of it to grant the command sudo access which gonna bypass the user altogether this takes a while because i didn't give give the vm a lot of bandwidth because it's not really needed because it's a local vm where i'm just installing pterodactyl so th th this takes some time depending on the system and the network speed. So while, I'm, while we're ready, we just pre-copy the other command. So we have a pre-copied, which is the PHP ar artisan key colon generate dash dash force. So we have a pre-copied and pasted, which is the application is set successfully. You want to back up this .env file because uh, it's gonna have the um, encryption key in it, which you need to decrypt some stuff if you need to ever decrypt it. And you wanna store this off, preferably offsite on a machine that you always have back access to, where only you have access to it because if you lose this file, you lose the encryption key, so you can't encrypt any data. So back this up somewhere else and not just on the local server that you had technically installed. So now when that is done, we can go ahead with the next command, which is now we're gonna set up the environment configuration. So let's do the artisan setup command thing. So egg author email, I'm just gonna do tmqc at youtube.com because I can. This is not really, you, you don't need to put in valid, like a real email here, but you need to put in an email, you can just do fake at fake dot fake if you freaking want to. And application URL. So this is the URL to your install, which is on, on the, my side, it's gonna be a local install to just this machine. So HTTP, because I'm not gonna use SSL for this since it's a, since it's a this is just a guide. But if you're gonna install this on a public server, you, can, you should do uh, the uh, HTTPS colon slash slash and so get secure connections. This requires you to have an SSL certificate, which which we will set up later. And then like panel dot your domain dot com. This is what you would use. I'm however not gonna use that. I'm gonna use normal HTTP. 
and do 192.168.1.104 because that is the IP address I gave this server. And the time zone, I'm just going to do with the default thing, America slash New York, just to make it default. And this, I would recommend, if you're just doing this for yourself, on your, for your own game services stuff, I would recommend using Redis. But you should play around with this on different environments just to see what fits the best for you. So I'm just going to do Redis for everything here because that's what it says is recommended. So I'm just going to do that for now. And this is pretty cool. So Pterodactyl has a UI based settings editor, which means that instead of you having to open up the files from FTP, like a config file, you can edit it straight in the panel itself, like a config file for Minecraft to serve the th properties and etc. So you can open up that in Pterodactyl itself. So you, you, I'm going to allow it for now. And then the race host, this you will leave it blank. Just leave everything blank there. And if you get an error here, we have to do this command though. So service, difficult spell, red is server start. Because by default, the Redis server is not started. This is where a lot of people get issues and they get confused and they reinstall the server and get the same error all over again. And after 10 years, they finally figure out that you have to start the Redis server manually. It will be fixed. That is going to be fixed in the panel later on, like when, when we get deeper through the panel or the install, so to say. We're going to set up the auto start for Redis, but for now we're going to have to start it manually. And then we're going to set up the um, database connection, which we made 1001, default port, default panel, well, default database, default user, some password, because this is database password. And then we're going to set up the mail server. So this, if you're just doing it for your own game server, you don't really need to set this value, but, well, you're gonna have to do this part, but we're just gonna leave it to mail, because it's local mail server. And this is just like, what email should this originally from? So that would be like, if you're doing it for business, uh, no that reply at example.com, exactly like it shows here, but, I can do this to, we could add this to pretty much whatever we want. So we're just going to do no reply at local.host because I can. And here's the email, the name you wanted to be shown from. So we can just set it to my local game server. And we're going to use SSL because why not? So now it comes to seeding the database, which pretty much means imported database tables to the database. And yes, we want to run this command. This, mean, this would populate the database with all the recovery tables, default eggs installed, etc., etc. And now we're going to create the Pterodactyl user, like the default user that we want to use for this. So is this user an administrator? Yes. Email address, teamkc at youtube.com, if I could spell. Username, teamkc. First name, teamkc. Last name, in case you, because why not? Password, one, two, three, four. Okay, there we go. And now this, the by default, Pterodactyl in the install guide, in the documentation, it is using Nginx, uh, um, Nginx. It's using Nginx as the default web server. But you can also choose to install it over Apache, but it's more complicated because the guide is more directed towards uh, towards um, Nginx. So you're gonna copy the, the um, if using Nginx or Apache, not on CentOS, the the crown command here. And now we're gonna do the sudo the sudo cron tab dash e command because now we're gonna set up the automatic cron job stuff for it to actually work properly, like automatic creation, etc., etc. And we are going to use nano for this because it's really simple to do, but you can use Vim or add depending on how you're using it. But we are going to use nano because that's what I'm using and I love that. And after that is pretty much copy the next thing in the, in the box. 
Let's copy it and press Control X to exit and confirm the saver pressing Y. And let's press Enter. When it says file name, file name to write, just press Enter on it. And that's pretty much it for that. So what we're gonna do now is create a queue worker, which means we need to to go into the system directory, which is in etc slash systemd slash system, and create a file called server service. You can name this whatever you want, but I would recommend leaving it default to this. So we have to do nano space and that thing, we're opening up a blank page. I'm going to copy the entire contents of the gray box right below it. Let's copy it in and leave it as default because we're running on the Ubuntu server. And save it and save it as that file. And after that, you can pretty much just cop and go, keep scrolling down. And now we, we're going to enable now the Redis server and it's going to be automatically started on system boot. And then we're going to just enable and create the service that we created for t the pterodactyl queue the the, you know, the pterodactyl queue worker that we just created in the file the pterodactyl.service which enables in that service and now we're done with that part so that is the getting started part now we got the panel itself somewhat installed but we cannot access it yet so what we have to do now is go to the web server configuration which is just in the next part here on the left on the left side on the, we were in the getting started now we're on web server configuration and we're simply use, using nginx this is what we're going to go for so what i did here i didn't go I, I you can choose with ssl and you can choose without but i went without ssl so what we're going to have to do here is we're going to scroll up a bit and this is just for if you're using SSL, remember that. So what we have to do here is copy the part where it says go into the um, Nginx directory, which we are going to do here. Whoops, Daisy. I did not copy that right. Of course I didn't because I'm freaking noob at this. It was fun playing around with the system. So let's go into that system and create a file called pterodactyl.conf. I'll also get another and then I'm gonna copy everything in the without SSL because we're not running SSL on this. And then here, here's a trick because by default, the panel only allows for a 100 megabyte file upload if you're uploading through the panel itself through PHP. But that can be altered here by doing the max upload file size. You can set this to pretty much whatever you want. I would recommend going only up to one gigabyte. So I would do 1024. And the post max size has to be larger than max file size. So for law, for this one, I'm just gonna do 2048. You can set it to 1025 if you have 1024 by just doing it to 2048. And then we scroll up here will go up to where is it up here under the domain we are going to type in the ip of the server because it did not set up a host name so 192.168.1.104 and let's double check everything in here to make sure that everything is set which it seems to be we're going to save it and then we are going to keep going keep doing the guide as it says so enabling configuration and then we're gonna restart the engine server and next is just the apache stuff with ssl which we are going to ignore because we're not using it so if we are lucky now if we go to the web browser 192.168.1.104 it still says engines because why? Hmm. Why is that? Maybe it is. Hang on. Hmm. Oh, that's why. I think. Hang on. Um, did 
this mess up yeah so it should be like that because I accidentally missed a letter in this apparently so it's gonna have to be like that and then we're gonna just oh yeah yeah never mind never mind so if I refresh this again what happens then okay well troubleshooting woohoo Let's just move this out of here. Let's see if it grabs that correctly. I don't know if it will, but we're about to find out. Okay, there we go. So that is the installation. I'm, I messed up a little bit, but if you follow the guide, it should work just fine. So now, which means is we can log in with the username and password just created, which means we are in the panel, which is great because that's exactly what we want. But we're far away from done. So what we have to do now is we have to install the the da the, da the daemon demon or however you want to say it. So which means that first we have to check so that your server is capable of running the daemon properly. So. By doing the lscpu grab command, we can see that we are using VMware because that's what we're using, and we have virtualization type full, which means that we can run Docker just fine. So now we're gonna install Docker. This can also take some time. I hate it when it takes time because it's slow. Okay, while it's doing that, we can prepare the next command, which is start Docker on boot, which means that we are gonna start the Docker service when the system is booting up. And now when that's done, you can enable swap RAM if you have that, if you want to have that. It's not really, really recommended to have swap RAM it's just if you want to support it, you can. But like, I, I'm, I'm not using it personally, but you can if you want to. So next we're gonna install Node.js. And here's the thing that a lot of people miss out on because now it says we're gonna install Node.js and everything. However, we have to scroll up a little bit. I'm gonna make this smaller. And if you look at the dependencies here, it, if you scroll down to where we were, it says install Node.js make GC, GCC G++. But we also need the Node GYP, we need tar, unzip, make, GCC, G++ in Python. So what we're gonna do is apt install and just go, since we installed Node.js, we haven't done that yet, but we're gonna do that now. So we're gonna type Node.js space node GYP space tar space unzip. We already did that before, but we can do it again just to make sure. Make GCC G++, oh, GCC, GCC, G++, and Python, and dash Y. So this is recommended to do because the panel says it, but it doesn't say in here that it will, that it will install. So that's what I like to do when I'm doing it, just check the requirements and install them. Well, the dependencies actually, just and just install everything in here where it says to install. It's just the best way for me that I found that to install it because then you know that you have everything that the panel needs. So we, since we're since we are not using any other distributions, we're using Ubuntu 16. We can skip this and keep the. Now we're going to install the daemon software. 
which is this part here. So we're going to make two directories. Just want to clear this. I actually should just have left this open like this the entire video, but yeah. You just go to the link and follow along like that. And now we're going to enter the daemon directory. And this is where OVH slash so you start servers coming into fact it comes into fact a factor which you have to think about. This will be in another video later on. So let's download the daemon software. And here is the sudo the npm install only production. This is what it, so if we just do it like this we're going to notice an error coming up here in a second, if it does it this time. It's not always that it does this, but it likes to do it for me, but we're about to find out. Yeah, here we go. So warning. User TMKC does not have permission to access the di developer directory. So the easiest way to solve this is just run the command again, but add sudo in front of it. Just to make it real simple. That's just the simple, the most simple way I found how to how how to install this the easy way. Obviously, you can do it that another way around, but this is what I found works. So, okay, and here's another thing. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff here and found 20 vulnerabilities. So we're gonna run the npm audit fix command once. It's gonna tell you that it still have vulnerabilities, etc. and you want it to run it again. Don't do that because I've seen a lot of instances where you, if you run the command twice, it something is gonna break here. For example, let's see here the npm autofix dash dash force that can break the daemon da the daemon to stop working or well not work at all so i would recommend just leaving it as is when you run the command once so what do you want to do now so as you can see here it says that we have to configure the daemon so the easiest way because it was somewhat recently added not recently but it was added in this port we go into the um tactile control panel go into the configuration of it, which is the the three cogwheels up here. Now it says exit admin control. We're gonna add a location first, add a new. So we're just gonna call this local. You can call this pretty much whatever you want, but I'm just gonna call it local. And then we're gonna add a node, add new, which is, well, the name of the node that you want to have it. I'm gonna call this local with a local as this, with local as description. And FDQN, this is where we put in the server IP that we put in there. Well, that we installed it on. And we're going to use HTTP connection because that's what we chose. And we're not going to proxy. And this is where we have the um, daemon data installed. So what we're going to do now here is go and look at the total memory. So this is total memory we have in the box, which is four gigs of RAM. And we have no al over allocation. You can add this, if you type in 100% here, it's gonna give you a total of eight gigs of RAM to allocate, but you only have four gigs of RAM on the system. Like, yeah. So I would just set this to 0%. Total disk space, we added 40 gigs. I added 40 gigs to this, so. Four, four, so that's 40 gigs right there and no over allocation. And this is just left at default. So create node. And what we can do now is add an IP address. So I'm gonna add that and I'm just gonna do 25565 because I can. That's default for Minecraft. And as you can see, we have added that, but now we're gonna have to add everything into the um, configuration for the daemon. So we go into configuration, we go to generate token. I don't really know if this is gonna work because I haven't port forwarded this. So we're about to find out. Okay, it actually wrote it. Great. So that means that that thing is written. 
So as you can see, it's spinning. We go back to the note list. It's spinning, and it doesn't have a heartbeat, so to say. It's red. It's an empty heart. It's red. So which means that now when we did that, because th there's a way you can pay go in there and paste in this entire configuration file that we were looking at, which is we just go into node and configuration. You can pretty much just take this entire section here and put it and just copy it and paste in the core.json file, which is in the s slash SRV slash daemon slash config folder. But you can have, but the easier way is just to do the auto deploy, generate the token, and just paste it in as a command in the daemon, in the daemon directory right there. It will write this file for you. And after when that is done, we go to the npm, the sudo npm start, which is gonna start and set up the daemon for the first time. This is this you have to do this, otherwise the daemon won't really work. So this is really important that you have to do it this way. Then it will and it's gonna create an isolated network interface for the pterodactyl because it does that. So which means that now when it's put up properly, it's now listing insecure connections on 000.8080 because that's what it's listing it to. So if you go back to the panel now go nodes it's online we have successfully connected the node to the panel but now if you close out of putty which is the program we're using for SSH it will shut on the daemon so you don't want that you want the daemon to be online all the time so what you're going to do is hit now because we can't really type exit or whatever it won't allow that or maybe it's quit I don't know but what we do is we hit control C to exit out of the instance and if we reload the panel now, just to make sure, the daemon is disconnected. So what we're going to do now is going to add it into the services. So now we enter the system director again, where we made the ter the pterodactyl queue worker. And we're going to create a service called wings. You can name this pretty much whatever you want, but you have to you might have to do some reconfiguring in certain files. So I'm gonna create that service and we're gonna copy and paste this data. Just paste it in. And then we're gonna check, yeah, it's still down. And we're gonna copy this enable now and wings because that's the service we have. And we're gonna enable it, which means that it enables it, which means the thing is now online. And then using forever, it's if you're you're running a older version. I think of whatever. It, it's something else. I don't know really what them what for use what forever does really. So I I'm not using it, and I don't know what it does. I'm not even gonna try to explain what it does. So that's pretty much it right there. Yeah, now successfully installed everything there for the panel. But we're gonna add, now we're gonna add the databases. So users can, can create a database for their server. So we have to do now, we go into databases, create new, because it's the connection for it. So th this is database host. This is not creating the actual database. So this is the database, the database name. You can call this whatever you are, I'm just gonna call it local. And this is the host, which we may want to, 0 .0 .0 0 0 0.0.0.0.1. Port default username is pterodactyl user. This is the user we made before. And the password is the password made for that user. And we're gonna press the local node, create, and we have added it as a database. So to create a server, you go into the servers tab, create new. While I'm doing this, I'm actually just gonna launch up Minecraft because I'm gonna show you that it actually works properly. You're gonna play right there and create a server name. So here's the server name. This can be pretty much whatever. So I'm just gonna test for you to. The description you can leave at default. You don't really have. You don't even have to use this. Um, I like what I like to do is press these tick the like untick the start server installed. That's what I like to do because well it's project self explanatory what it does. Server uh, the server owner. Here is the name of the user we made. And node 
well, that's the node we have, the default allocation, that's the IP that we, and port that we set earlier. Database sets like one database allocation limit. Leave this because this is not implemented yet, as far as I know. Memory, here's the max RAM of the server. This is the max RAM you want to give to the server. Because we only have four gigs of RAM, I'm gonna give it, give it two because I can. And it, everything here is in megabytes. Swap, we did not enable swap memory, so leave that at default. Disk space, we have four, we have 40 gigs. Whoops, it is this loud. I have to do this real quick. Um, like that. So disk space, we're just gonna give it like, let's say 10 gigs. And CPU limit, this is the maximum amount of cores you have in percentage. And the, how the technical panel works is that one core, is 100%, two cores is 200%, three cores 300%, etc. We have a total of four cores, which is 400%, but we don't want to allocate all of that. So we're gonna give it, let's say, two and a half core, which is 250%. Lock I await, I just leave that at default because I don't really do know what that does. I just like leaving it at default. And then we have all the nests, which is like Minecraft, and if we go in Source Engine, we have the Arc, CSGO, Garry's Mod. But I go into Minecraft, they have pre, pre made scripts for Bungie Core, Forge, Paper, Sponge, and Vanilla. I'm just gonna do Paper. And here's the, here's the server variables. You can leave this as default when you're creating the service for, for the first time. And it has been successfully created. It can take a little bit, depending on how fast your network speed etc is and how good your server specs are this can always take a while so this can whoops i'm not going to do that so th this can take a while so you're just going to go to down music press service again and you can see that it is currently installing so we're going to hit refresh a few times because this doesn't take that long especially for this kind of stuff it's pretty much downloading the paper jar file for minecraft so as soon as this is done, we're gonna see, how, I'm gonna keep going with the guide, so to say. So now we can see change from, from installing to active. If we go into this, if you click that link and press this button right here, you get to the, the control panel itself for the server. So, which means you can, if you press file management, you can see the, fi the file management there, configuration, here you can see your startup parameters that you have, you can see SFTP settings, which is how you connect to through a program like FileZilla or WinSAP or whatever program you have. And allocation settings, this is where, ha where you have your assigned IP and ports. Then server name, this is like the name that you have in the panel up here. This is, does not affect the actual server name that shows up on the game itself. Something I like with a Teradox panel is that you can create sub-users, which is pretty much like a norm, another user that can give the different permissions. So if you want them to only be able to pretty much start and stop server, you fill in the email address and press start, stop. And if you want them to be able to restart and kill the server, you can do that. And you can even make it so you can only, like, let's say, do this, which means that he can only restart the server. He can't even use the console commands to do anything. He can only restart the server. And you can view, compress, etc., etc. It's really extensive, and I really love the feature. But so what we do now is go into console, press start, and since this is Minecraft and it loves its EULA or end use license agreement, however you want to call it, it, it will pop up a window here. So it's just gonna make sure downloading vanilla jar and patching it because it's bigot. And here we go. The EULA acceptance, I accept because, yeah. So what we can do now is go back to Minecraft because that's what we did there. Because let's see if we're doing Minecraft here go into multiplayer and that server is just my local server instance instance that I have right there just for my on my local test machine dev machine that I have so we're gonna add in the server that we just created 192.168.1.104 and we need the port because we're using default port of Minecraft 
and the server is not up yet, that's what it says pinging. So it's still booting up. It can, it, when it's first launching on a somewhat low spec machine, it can take a while. So as you can see, it's preparing the uh, spawn area. This can always, this always takes a little bit. So yeah, but that's pretty much it. Extensively. So let's just go into my dev server because I have that. And this is pretty much what you're going to be able to see. You are now on your local Minecraft server with everything. So I'm just going to, there is the plugins I have installed in my dev server. Everything is up and running. This is on my physical machine that I have in my server room, but it's, it's essentially just exactly the same thing, but you can, I'm um, yeah. So that's pretty much how you do it pretty much. So let's just wait for this. so I can show you exactly that it's actually working. <coughs> Sorry about that. Oh God, if I have to do that, okay. Well, whatever. So that's pretty much it. That is how you install the Territorial Panel, its daemon, and create a server by on, on Linux. So the guide is not really long, and no, I have not done any video editing on it whatsoever. Just decided to create a guide and upload it, so that's why it's some errors. And service on, so let's just show it. And there it is. So if we go to edit the server, you can see it's the IP address. We join it. And as you can see in the console here, I just joined the server and there it is. I'm now connected to the server I just created in the Teradoc panel. I can play around, play on it just fine, etc., etc., etc. Works just fine. So yeah, that's it. That is how you install, configure and set up Teradoc panel with a game server. Now there are a billion different other types of installs you can do with Teradactyl and how you configure it, yada, yada, yada. I just installed it using the default, a, the default documentation provided from the Teradactyl website. So what I will do is in the video description, I will leave the links to the guide that I used and also the guide to the Teradactyl Discord. No, this is not sponsored at all. I just decided to make this guide because I felt like it. The panel is really amazing, and I really hope that it becomes one of the industry standard uh, industry standard game panels for for uh, for every business, as Ron said, and that everyone uses instead of something like TCI, I mean, open game panel, whatever. Teradoc is just simply the best. I freaking love it. So yeah, so if you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button. Maybe hit the subscribe button as well. And uh, yeah. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.